Checkmate. This is it, the final episode of this whole light force conversion thing that we're doing on the Jeep and I am super excited about what we are installing today. These are the Rock 9s and this is Light Force Compact Utility Light. Here's the thing, I've had Rock lights on the Jeep but they're just Amazon specials. I've barely used them because they're not that good of a quality, they're not super bright. But then when I really started to need to use them, like they just weren't worth it. So I started shopping for different ones. I know there's a company called Lux Lighting that makes really nice rock lights. Apparently they're magnetic and you just put them underneath your rig and those magnets hold really, really strong and they are ultra bright, ultra white. But I also looked at the KC Highlight Cyclones and those are super popular. A lot of people love the KC Highlight Cyclones. But I've also heard reviews that some of them don't work very well or they'll like die out or whatever. I don't know. I'm not gonna make an opinion on something I've never owned or personally had. Like that just would not be right of me. But then when I was talking to Lightforce about this whole sponsorship thing, they asked me, well, what lights on the Jeep do you wanna replace? And I said, well, I needed some rock lights, but I don't know if you guys have anything like that. And they're like, uh, yeah, we do. We have the rock nines. And then they sent me like 10 of them. I'm never gonna be able to install all this on the Jeep. Like that's just a lot of light for one rig. And they said, oh no, just save some for the Forerunner if you want. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save four of these, put them aside. That'll go on the Forerunner at some point. And today we're gonna install six of them. Two of them are gonna go underneath the hood. That way, when I open up the hood at night and I need to work underneath the hood, I can just flick a switch and I'll have two lights. That's what people use the Cyclones for and that's exactly what I'm gonna use these for. And then the other four are gonna be my rock lights. I'm gonna put two on each side of the rig. So that's basically what the plan is gonna be for these, but let me show you what's inside. Look how nice they are. There are definitely some details on here that you might miss just by looking at it on this video. First of all, the housing. Aluminum housing feels really tough, feels really robust, like it can stand whatever it is I throw at it. Compared to the Amazon specials that I have, those are plastic and I'm surprised that they haven't even broken off yet. Now I also like that they're flush mounted, so wherever you put it, if it's a flat surface, it's gonna sit really nice and secure there. Even in the back, they put like a little kangaroo logo on here, like they didn't have to do that. It's those little details just, that just lets you know that you're buying quality. They give you two plates to, to put them on. They're rubber plates, two different thicknesses. So one has a curve on it. So if you're gonna try to put this on, say something that's a tube, then you can put it like that and then it'll sit nice on that. Or if you're gonna flush mount it, then you have one that's flat. And the way this works is you basically just take your, your cord, you put it right through one of these holes like this, route it right on through. And then as you can see, now you have a good mounting surface and wherever you're gonna mount this to, it's not gonna damage the metal that you're mounting it to. So you have a really good rubber buffer. On the end, it is just bare wire. You're not gonna get the Deutsch connectors like we did with the other lights, but you don't need it. I mean, these are pretty small lights. It would be overkill to have some sort of Deutsch connector on there. If you wanted to add one, you're more than welcome to, but they do not provide that. Now, Lightforce did send me these for the Rock 9s in case I wanted to use these also. And what these are, are angled holders. They come separately, they don't come with the kit, but if you can see, they're like angled. So that way, if I wanted to put this, at an angle somewhere, if let's say I need this for some sort of scene lighting, or if I wanna put it on my tailgate or wherever I wanna put it on, I can put this on there and then, boom. So when I mount it, you have like some sort of an angle wherever you're putting it on to. So this would be great if you put it on the roof rack, like on the side of your roof rack like this, then you'll know it's gonna be pointing downwards versus straight ahead. Now on the front, they have their logo right there, which I think is a really nice touch. A lot of rock lights, they won't put their logos on there because I mean, no one will ever see them. Now here's a detail that you might've missed. If you look at it straight ahead, right? It kind of 
indents inwards. So the sides of this is way taller than where the lens is. Why is that important? Well, if you're using these as rock lights and you happen to be scraping along a rock or something, then wherever you're scraping will re greatly reduce hitting that lens because of the because it's indented inwards because the sides are raised up then you're basically protecting that lens my amazon specials don't have that kind of protection at all if i were to somehow scrape the side of my vehicle those rock lights are going to be done and damaged but this this stands a better chance of getting hit by a rock and still protecting the lens that's right there. As far as power, they are nine watts or three LEDs at three watts each. Effective lumens is 272. Beam angle is 90 degree flood. 10 to 30 volt DC, 0.3 amps at 13.2 volts. IP67 waterproof rating, hard coated polycarbonate lens, die cast aluminum housing. The weight is 0.8 grams or 0.28 ounces. They are 3 inches wide by 1.7 inches deep and they are 0.9 inches high with the base or 0.4 inches high without the base. Not much else for me to say about these things except let's just go ahead and get these things installed. So for the lights that we're gonna be mounting in the engine bay, I've been trying to figure out where I'm gonna put these lights. Now, every time I've seen people put cyclones or any kind of lights, I've always seen them put them one over there and then one over here somewhere, which is fine, but I think that that's just not putting light where I need it. So I started asking myself, all right, well, if I'm out on the field and something went wrong with the Jeep and I had to diagnose, what are the things that we check first? Normally we check our fuses, we check our electricals, make sure all that's good and connected. And then we also check all of our fluids. Those are the areas that I really would want to see light. It's pointless to have light coming here directly on top of the engine because then the fall off of the light, it gets weaker as it comes away from it. So I'm not gonna get a lot of light over there or over here if I put a light dead center. And if I put it up there where I've seen other people do it, well, it's pretty much shining down on the intake where I don't need that. And then it's gonna be shining down onto my switch pod, which is not really a necessity for me to check unless one of my auxiliary lights went out. Keep in mind too, that when we start mounting these lights, these brackets along with the light makes it pretty thick. I looked at the places where people have put it before, but on that side, it's not gonna work because the intake is there. So I think where I'm gonna wanna put the lights, I think I'm gonna put one right up here because once this closes, there's a huge gap over here where that light will fall. So there'll be some space there. Having a light here, especially the one that angles down with this bracket, somewhat like this, that'll just shine light over this whole area. Now for the other side, if I mount a light here or here, that's a good spot as well because there's a ton of space over here above the battery so that when I close the hood, then the light itself won't hinder the hood from closing. And what's good about putting a light in this side also is that, again, if something were to go wrong and I need to check my electricals, then I'll be able to shine the light all over this entire area where my fuses are, my batteries are, and everything that I need to look at. Plus the dipstick is over here so I can pull that out and take a look. So I think those are just the optimal spots where I'll be able to put a light. Now, if you've been watching my previous videos, then you'll know that I took this harness and I basically cut it up and got rid of the part that had the relay, the fuse, and the switch. Because for the Rock 20s and Rock 40s that I just installed, I didn't need any of this stuff. I just needed to plug it directly into the switch pod. Well, for the lights underneath the hood, I don't want to put that into my switch pod for the simple fact that if something were to go wrong and I need to look underneath the hood, I don't want it to be reliant on the ignition being turned on. So I'm gonna run these on its own circuit directly to the battery without the ignition needing to be turned on for it to work. Here is the part that we cut up before. This had split into two different lights. I'm gonna reuse this part so it's long enough to where I'm gonna be able to put one of these um, one of these Rock 9s directly to this thing, and then I'm just going to splice the other Rock 9s and tap into this wire to go to the other light. So from there, you follow that, that will go to a relay, and we will need to mount this relay somewhere in the engine bay. And then, going all the way down one end of it, 
you'll see it goes to a fuse and you want that to be as close to the battery as possible, which it will be. And then on the other end of that, positive and negative. So this will go onto the battery positive terminal and this will go to the negative part of the battery terminal. And then coming out of the relay as well, we have your switch. And I think I have an idea of where I'm going to put this as well. Okay, so I'm on the passenger side of the engine bay and over here I have two circuit breakers that are tied to the battery and those circuit breakers are mounted onto this bracket that I made a long time ago and then that bracket is held in place over here with a bolt. So what I'm thinking is removing the circuit breakers and the bracket for now just to kind of have an open view of everything and then mount that relay right onto this same bolt. So then the relay will basically drop down into there out of the way and then put all the stuff back together put a hole right here and that's maybe where I can just pop in that button which would be a great spot because then when I open the engine bay all I gotta do is press the little button here and that'll light everything up and then from there I'll have one wire that will just basically snake to that first light and then we move all the way to the other end I'll splice the other light up there and then it'll run down this uh, inside the grooves of this uh, hood All right, so for the rock lights themselves, this install, I'm hoping, will go a lot faster and smoother than what we had to deal with with the rock nines that we installed underneath the hood. That one involved relays and switches and plugging it up to the battery. I don't have to do any of that here because all we're doing is replacing the rock lights I already have. And they are already wired up to the switch pod that I have in the engine bay. So all I have to do is take down these, find the place where I connected them, take that out and then go ahead and just drop in our new Rock 9s. All right, so here's the wire that is plugged directly to my switch pod. All I gotta do is mount these new rock lights underneath there and then wire it to this and we are good. All 
so now that the lights are installed, let's shoot some epic B-roll. And with that, the lighting for the Jeep is complete. Like that's it. Like I, there is no other light I'm going to need anymore. Every switch on my switch pod is now occupied by some sort of light. So we are good to go. All right, real quick, going back to the Rock 9s, let me just show you a quick comparison of the Amazon specials I had before and the Rock 9s that I just installed underneath the Jeep. Take a look. Now admittedly, you might not see a huge difference and you would be right. But remember, we are going from three lights on each side to only two, which tells me that two of these Rock 9s are producing the same kind of light output than three of the Amazon special lights and it's drawing less power. So that's a humongous win. And I also don't know if you can tell much from the video, but I've spoken about it before. Light Force has a certain light color chemistry where it's not this ultra white, light it's kind of like has a warm tone to it and i like that a lot it's a lot more pleasing to the eye at least in my opinion but honestly you don't need rock lights to be extremely bright you need them to be extremely clear like this is not a car show unst, 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 unst. Because what do we really use rock lights for? Well, we use it so that we can see the ground when we're trailing at night. So what you don't want is something that's so bright that it's blinding, nor do you want something that's just flashing colors like neon pinks and greens and yellows. You want a light that will allow you to see the ground clearly. And here's something to consider too, rock lights really aren't for you, the driver. I mean, yeah, sure, you can look over and kind of see the lights, but you're not gonna see much. No, we install rock lights for our spotters. Our spotters step out of the vehicle and they guide us through the trail. Well, at night, they're going to need to be able to see the ground underneath your rig so they can guide you accordingly. And most times when you're going to be trailing at night, you're going to need to turn off all of your off-road lights, your ditch lights, your LED light bars. You got to turn those things off because you don't want to be blinding your spotter in the face. So all they're really relying on are the rock lights underneath your vehicle. In fact, last minute decision, I decided to take two more rock nines and add them to the front bumper. And now I have light shining just in front of the front tires because I realized that if someone is gonna guide me through a trail, they need to be able to see what's coming up and where my tire is about to go. So with all these light force lights installed on the vehicle, man, I am really, really loving it right now because I wish you could see in person how it all looks together. Having the same lights from one company just gives you that kind of color temp all around versus mix and matching from different companies and they kind of have their own different temperatures and it looks a little weird. Now everything looks so consistent that I am loving it. You know, I did my research on this company way before even reaching out to them and I knew that they made top quality products. I just didn't know how good it was until I actually got them in my hands, installed them on the Jeep and saw for myself. I, I wanna make it my own personal mission for more people in the United States to know about Light Force because Light Force has been a staple in Australia for a really, really long time. Unfortunately, 
not many people here in the United States knows much about them. You know, here we are so used to the KC highlights and the Baja designs and yeah, they make awesome lights. Like I'm not gonna lie, they make some great lights, but I'm just saying that this is a contender too. So if you have been looking into lights lately and kind of shopping around for off-road lights, really give Lightforce a chance because I think you will be really impressed with the quality of their products and the light output that their lights provide. Now, if I can just get them to outfit the Forerunner too, I'll be all set. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed this three-part series on the Lightforce conversion so you can see all the products that they offer because truly, I am so happy with them and I'm loving the color temperature where it's super bright, but it's not ultra white. It has just a warmness to it. Everything just looks really, really good and I invite you to go see for yourself. If you did enjoy these videos, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Ha, huh, you thought I forgot about the giveaway, didn't you? I did not. I was just waiting until the very end to see who's still sticking around and watching. Here is how the giveaway is going to work. You need to do three things. Number one, like this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel and to Lightforce's channel. And number three, granted you did both of those already, you need to answer three trivia questions that I am going to read to you. The first person to comment below with the right answer and did those other two things will win a pair of Rock 40 Amber lights directly from Lightforce. They're just now being rolled out to market, so you're gonna be one of the first people to own a pair of Rock 40 Amber lights. So here are the trivia questions. Number one, how many watts do the Rock 40, Rock 20, and Rock 9s have respectively? Number two, the HTX2s on my front bumper are considered hybrid lights. What kind of bulbs are on the outer ring and what kind of bulb is in the middle main light? Hint, you have to go back to my HTX2 review video for this one. And then finally, what are the three light patterns Lightforce offers with most of their lights? First one to comment with the correct answers wins. Go!